Hey, what's up guys? Rules for Rebels here and we are talking Bitcoin today. So right now Bitcoin is sitting at $1,056. Um, if we look back, back on, I think it was what, the 16th, we were at like $1,259. We dropped down to like $1,102 and then it really tanked down to, I think the low it hit was like $936 or somewhere thereabouts. And it's somewhat quickly recovered. But uh, what this is all about or what the drop is about is talk about a Bitcoin fork. Um, so for those of you guys who are confused by the fork, who don't know what it is, don't know what it means, don't know how it affects your Bitcoins, that is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I've been you know using Bitcoin for a number of years. I feel like I'm moderately knowledgeable about it. But when you actually get into like the nitty gritty and the technology behind Bitcoin, it's not something that I know a ton about. So when people talk about hashing and Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Unlimited and what happens if Bitcoin forks, it can be very confusing. So I just wanted to uh, basically make a video talking about like what is a fork and what causes it. Um, are miners, Bitcoin miners, supposed to be able to make decisions about the direction that Bitcoin is going to go? What is Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Unlimited? Um, there's been a lot of talk about if 75% of miners agree on a fork and agree which way to fork, that Bitcoin could potentially split into two different currencies, Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Unlimited. I also wanted to know what happens to those of us who own Bitcoin. Do we have two different types of Bitcoins? Do we have to choose which direction we want our Bitcoins to go? Um, is there any danger in using like Electrum as a wallet as opposed to a uh, multi-bit or a different wallet where it downloads the entire Bitcoin blockchain? Um, and then lastly, is there anything that we should do to prepare for this happening? So. I just wanted to show you guys a quick article article from Coinbase. They say, we wanted to provide customers notice of how a possible fork of the Bitcoin in Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Unlimited will affect Coinbase accounts. The only version of Bitcoin supported on the Coinbase platform today is Bitcoin Core, currently represented by the symbol BTC. We may provide support for Bitcoin Unlimited in the future, depending on market conditions and stability of the protocol. We cannot guarantee whether or when we may support support may be available. Customers who wish to access both blockchains at the time of the fork should withdraw their Bitcoins from Coinbase since we cannot guarantee what will happen during the hard fork or when this may be available. If one chain receives overwhelming majority of support from miners, users, and exchanges, we reserve the right to alter the names of the chains or discontinue support for chains in the future. Ensuring the safety of customers' funds is our top priority. In the event of a hard fork, the Bitcoin protocol is likely that Coinbase will temporarily suspend deposits, withdrawals of Bitcoins from the platform, pending our assessment of the technical risks posed by any fork. Uh, so Ethereum had forked a while back. I wasn't really following Ethereum that much back when it forked. Um, but Ethereum's doing better than ever. As far as Bitcoin, a lot of people say it, it's kind of too early in the technology and too early in the life of the currency for a fork to be a good thing or for a fork to happen. Now, any of you guys who are very knowledgeable about Bitcoin, feel free to chime in. I know I've read a ton of articles about this potential fork, and I'm honestly more confused than before I started. I've been doing a little bit of chatter on Reddit with some people trying to understand what's going to happen to coins, what's going to happen to Bitcoin, etc. And I'm getting like totally different answers. Like one person's telling me that your coins are essentially cloned and you have, let's say I have 10 Bitcoins. After the fork, I now have 10 BTC. And I also have 10 BTU. So essentially my Bitcoins are doubled. And I imagine one version, which gets the support, is going to go high in price. The other one's going to probably fade away. Um, but, you know, other people are telling me, no, 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 that, that's not the case. You have to choose which direction you want to go with your Bitcoins. Do you want your Bitcoins to become Bitcoin Core or Bitcoin Unlimited? Uh, so I reached out to some people on the interwebs and asked some of these questions. So uh, this is a little bit over my head. I apologize if I'm not explaining it well. If somebody wants to, feel free to drop some comments in the comments section below clarifying this. Uh, also, if anybody would have any interest in making like a little three to five minute video for my channel to help explain this better, I would welcome, welcome you on. Um, so anyhow, first off, here's the answers I got. What is a fork and what causes it? And the, the person said, I doubt I can do as good of a job as explaining as the many articles out there. Um, even though there is information all over the place, it should be easy enough to find information that thoroughly explains these kinds of forking and current event matters without tricks. I think over the years we try to provide decent sources of information, um, but it, I'll give it a quick try. So they say a soft fork 
allows miners and other users to update their software at their own pace, and it is backwards compatible. Example of what a SegWit is proposing to do. A hard fork forces miners and other users to choose between software. Which forks the Bitcoin chain into those who are running software to support version X and those who are supporting software to run version Y? So at the time of the fork, the miners will either be running software in which they are supporting one coin or another, and holders end up having one coin on each chain, which equals two coins. If everyone jumps on board and changes over to the dominant fork, the one with the most hashing power, then there is no issue because the dominant fork is the only one that is recognized. If each side wants to continue its own version, then the two coins remain. Those are also called altcoins. Many altcoins are forks of Bitcoin. Uh, the second question I had was, are miners supposed to be able to make decisions about the direction of Bitcoin? I've heard some people saying, well, you know, miners aren't supposed to be able to like make political decisions about Bitcoin. They're simply supposed to authorize transactions. So here was a response to that one. They make decisions about what software they run. They are not the total composition of what controls the space. There are developers and there are various other folks that build software on top of Bitcoin but are not involved in mining. But miners do have quite a bit of sway, especially if they can coordinate what they want to do, such as a hard fork. But even vendors and developers may choose not to follow the miners. Even though many vendors say they will merely follow the fork with the most hashing power in the longest chain, and some systems are merely set up to follow the longest chain by default, uh, next question was, what is Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Unlimited? Core, usually referred to as a status quo blockchain, software, development team, and governance, etc. Bitcoin Unlimited is a group of various folks who are running Bitcoin software to attempt to remove the block size limit from the way that Bitcoin is run, and it is not exactly clear what they are saying, but many more folks, but the more recognized folks in the Bitcoin Unlimited camp assert that they will hard fork the blockchain at a point in which they believe that they have an overwhelming majority of the hashing power. They could do so at 51%, but many of them are saying that 75% would be safer in order to get the most out of the hashing power and the most movement over to their chain. They may be wrong about various calculations and their level of support, but that is what some of them are currently saying. The next question I had was, when people say 75% of miners have to agree, is there a vote? What exactly does that mean? And the answer I got was that when you say you don't have to agree, there, you're putting a little bit too much emphasis on the language. There isn't actually like a sit down vote. There are ways that technical forks can measure what software miners are running and miners vote by choosing what version of the software they choose to run. They can switch between software in order to screw up the numbers and some can switch very quickly and others may take longer to switch. Some mining pools may have a decent amount of reserved computing power so that they can strategically turn on or off to show what version they are running or what version they support. And what version they are running can also be, be seen by which miners are finding blocks with what version of the software. And then one of my last questions was what happens to those of us who own Bitcoins? Do we now have two different types of Bitcoins? Do we choose which coin we want? I've heard some people say coins are cloned and you have two coins. What is true? So if the blockchain hard forks, then at the moment of the fork, you have exactly the same number of coins on each fork of the blockchain. So yes, it doubles. Whether that doubling lasts depends on if the fork lasts. A hard fork forces choice, but you could have two coins and see how each fork plays out over the years to see if you want to sell your coins on one fork or another and which one you want to support, or if you just want to keep both coins. Cloning does not seem to be the right word, even though at the beginning of a hard fork, you have an equal number of coins on each fork. Soft fork does not cause two chains because it is backwards compatible and miners and developers can upgrade their software at a much slower pace. So one more question I would have about this is, is, it, is having two versions of the coin actually good? Like do I, do I now have 10 coins at $1,200 for BTC? And do I also have, maybe Bitcoin Unlimited isn't as strong, but maybe those are worth $300 a coin. So do I also now have three grand or you know 10 coins at $300 in Bitcoin Unlimited and I've just doubled up on my money or it's like a stock split? I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. Uh, the last thing I asked was anything we should do to prepare, put our coins in a paper wallet, remove all coins from an exchange, any danger in using Electrum versus another wallet, 
Initially, some wallets or exchanges will only recognize one of the forks and some will recognize both. But over time, most of them will figure out whether they are going to upgrade to recognize both forks or fork X or fork Y. There is likely some variance in what exchanges and wallets are going to do and how they are going to approach this matter. There is already variance in all kinds of information in which miners or vendors or developers say what they are going to do, but they can also change their plan based on what others are doing. So um, I know that wasn't super clear, guys. I've been really confused uh, about this whole Bitcoin fork thing. I know there's a ton of articles out there, but a lot of the articles haven't answered those kind of those questions that we answered in this video. So I reached out to some people on Reddit and some other places. That's kind of the answers that I got. Just wanted to share them with you guys. And also, if anybody out there is like a miner or a developer for Bitcoin or just more knowledgeable about Bitcoin than myself, uh, I'd love for you to chime in and would welcome you to come on and do a guest vlog if you're interested in doing so. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned something. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will catch you tomorrow for the side hustle video, guys. Check you later.